Hey guys, Mike Builds. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I crimp and make my own high amperage DC power cables for solar, car audio, anything like that using these Harbor Freight pure copper lugs and pure copper wire. We're gonna crimp it, heat shrink it, and make a very reliable connection that's gonna last for years. So follow along if you guys wanna see me do that. Okay, so the items you're gonna need for this are gonna be some high quality copper lugs. I actually buy these at Harbor Freight because I find the price to be kind of the best in my area and I can get them locally. These are for welding actually to make welding cables, but they are pure copper lugs and these cost about $3 a pack. Now for cabling, I highly, highly suggest you buy oxygen free copper or pure copper wire and you can tell if you're buying speaker wire, for example, because it says OFC tinned. So this is pure copper, tinned copper wire. You don't want to use another type of wire called CCA. This is an example of CCA wire, copper clad aluminum. It feels a lot lighter than real copper and tend to be cheaper made. The wire itself is way cheaper, but for the type of applications you're going to be doing with solar and battery, you really want to use a high quality copper cable. That way you don't have any issues with heat or oxidation or anything like that. So this is just some kicker brand power cable. And the reason I use this stuff is because you can buy it at audio shops, you can buy it on Amazon, just make sure whatever wire you guys buy, it's copper wire or OFC copper wire. That's normally what I look for. Also welding cable works really well. As far as making the ends look really nice, I use this marine heat shrink. The marine heat shrink has glue inside. So once you melt it, it creates like a nice glue bond and it also seals the joint up really well for moisture. So I'd highly recommend using marine heat shrink on all your ends. As far as tools you're gonna need, I would highly suggest a nice set of cutters. You can use Doyle brand from Harbor Freight. These are just a cheap set off Amazon to help strip and cut your cables to link. And then you're gonna use a crimper tool. This is the crimper I use because it's hydraulic. Got all the dies here, the unit itself. It's very nice, costs about 60 bucks and you can make really good joints with this tool. I've used this thing tons and tons of times. Still works really good. And I get really reliable connections. Bad connections equals heat. Just remember that. All right, go ahead and open up your lugs. Next, what I do is I get my lug and I kind of measure how far the wire is gonna go in. So I normally do about here. We're gonna go ahead and strip that off. Take my big cutters and just very gently squeeze around it. Look at that nice clean wire, no corrosion. Make sure if you're using older cables, there's no corrosion or nothing crazy going on. Normally I give it a little bit of a twist. Take your copper lug, insert the wire into the copper lug until it's flush like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the crimper out and get that set up. So I get the crimper set up right on the edge, just like that. I use the right size dies. On the Harbor Freight one, I use the number two gauge wire because the four gauge wire seems to be a little small. So just make sure you use whatever dies give you the best crimp. Got our wire nicely inserted. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump on this a few times. And that's it, as you punt this, it's gonna crimp your lug onto your wire. Just like so. So my crimper leaves this little wings on it. If you want, you can recrimp it this direction to kind of push those in. I normally just leave them, it doesn't bother me. But you can see we have a very nice, very tight crimp. Pull on it, doesn't wanna come off. And guys, real quick, the reason why my crimps have these little wings on here is because the only ones available to me are for number two gauge wire and we're using a number four gauge wire. So basically what's going on right here is this is the empty void where there's no conductor. But all in the middle, all the wire is squished in there and nicely crimped. When these fuse together in the crimp, I do think it actually makes it a little bit stronger. Just letting you guys know, I know it looks kind of weird with these going on here, but it is a very solid and very reliable connection. So next you're gonna take your marine heat shrink or whatever heat shrink you like to use, slide it over the wire. And I normally put it right to about there. So that's kind of what it looks like. Now I'm gonna go hit this with the heat gun and I'll show y'all what it looks like when it's all shrunk. And that's what we're left with, guys. As you can see, we have a nice, clean, heat shrinked, very reliable wire connection that will last for years, that won't get hot. Let me know what you guys think. If y'all need any more help, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to try to help you guys. Thanks for watching.